in the following slides we'll discuss about the general plan of histology of the digestive system gastrointestinal tract or alimentary canal is a long muscular tube that begins from the oral cavity and ends at the anal canal now the different parts of the tract are specialized to perform different functions and hence there are structural modifications which can be seen in the different parts of the gastrointestinal tract esophagus and anal canal they are merely a transport passages the part of the alimentary canal from the stomach to the rectum is a proper digestive tract and it is responsible for the digestion and absorption of the food the reabsorption of secretions is an important function of the large intestine the structure of the alimentary canal from the esophagus up to the anal canal shows several features that are common to all these parts the wall of the tube it is made up of the following layers from inner to outer side the innermost layer is the mucous membrane that is made up of the lining epithelium a layer of connective tissue the lamina propria that supports the epithelium and then we are having a thin layer of smooth muscle called the muscularis mucosae the mucous membrane it rests upon a layer of loose areolar tissue called the submucosa then we are having thick layer of muscle called as muscularis externa that surrounds the submucosa covering the muscularis externa there is a serous layer or an adventitial layer primarily it is a mucosa in which the changes are seen in the alimentary tract the other layers they remain almost the same now we will discuss each layer in detail in other slides the lining epithelium of the mucosa is columnar all over the gut except in esophagus and in lower part of the anal canal where it is stratified squamous epithelium the stratified squamous epithelium has a protective function in these structures whereas the cells of the columnar epithelium are either absorptive or secretory the epithelium of mouth pharynx esophagus and uh, the anal canal it is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium whereas in stomach small intestine and large intestine we see the simple columnar epithelium folds of the mucosa in the esophagus they are seen with the naked eye as the longitudinal folds and these folds they disappear on the distension whereas in stomach these folds we see it as rugae and gastric bits whereas in small intestine these folds are present in the form of plicae circularis and villi whereas smaller folds they are seen as in the form of crypt of libercon and microvilli whereas large intestine we see the hostra and the intestinal glands the epithelium of the gut presents an extensive absorptive surface the factors contributing to the increase in the surface are first of all these are the folds there are numerous folds which can be seen by the naked eye in the mucous membrane and uh, they are called as plica circularis of the small intestine in the small intestine the mucosa bears in the numerous finger like projections that project into the lumen and they are called as villi now these each villi it is lined by the cells they are called as the enterocytes and on the margins of the enterocytes on the luminal surface small projections are seen here like projections and they are called as the microvilli in some uh, places the epithelium it dips into the lamina propria and they form the crypts uh, whereas the villi they are the projections that project into the lumen the epithelium of the gut it also performs a very important secretory function the secretory cells are arranged in the form of numerous glands and these some glands they are the unicellular glands and uh, they are the goblet cells the secretory cells being scattered among the cells of the lining epithelium in some of the organs the epithelium it dips into the lamina propria and forms a simple tubular glands and in other in some parts such as esophagus and duodenum 
compound tubular alveolar glands they are seen in the submucosa the other layer of the mucosa is the lamina propria which is made of collagen and the reticular fibers which are embedded in glycosaminoglycan matrix along with fibroblast blood vessels lymphatic vessels and the nerves each villus of the small intestine is having a core and which is filled with the lamina propria the mucosal glands they extend into the lamina propria that is in the esophagus and the anal canal to lubricate and protect it from the chemical injury it also consists of lymphocytes and gut associated lymphatic tissue then we are having the muscularis mucosae layer of the mucosa it is a thin layer which separates the connective tissue of the lamina propria from the submucosa it is having the inner circular and the outer longitudinal layer and it extends into the mucosal floats but not into the villi and uh, this muscularis mucosae it helps in the mixing of the intestinal contents to facilitate the absorption and the secretion then the other layer after the mucosa we are having the submucosa this submucosa it is a dense irregular connective tissue it consists of blood vessels then we are having lymphatic vessels then we are having the nerve fibers that traverse the submucosa now the submucosal plexus of unmyelinated nerve fibers and ganglion cells it forms the a plexus that is called as mesner's plexus and the mucus glands present in the esophagus and the proximal part of the duodenum now the submucosa histology of the different parts in the esophagus we are having the submucosal mucus glands whereas in the stomach no mucus glands are present in submucosa then in the duodenum these glands they are called as the berners gland and in the ileum we are having a specialized that is the pears patches whereas in the large intestine no such glands are seen muscularis externa it is the outermost layer and over the greater part of the gut the muscularis externa consists of smooth muscles the exceptions are the upper part of the esophagus and the anal canal where this layer contains the striated muscle fibers the muscle layer consists typically of an inner uh, circular layer and outer longitudinal layer of smooth muscle fibers both these layers actually consist of spirally arranged fasciculi the turns of the spiral being compact in the circular layer and elongated in the longitudinal layer the arrangement of muscle fibers shows some variations from region to region in the stomach an additional oblique layer is present in colon the longitudinal fibers are gathered to form prominent bundles called the tinea coli the localized thickness of the circular muscle fibers from sphincters that can occlude the lumen of the gut for example the pyloric sphincter is present around the pyloric end of the stomach and the internal anal sphincter it surrounds the anal canal a functional sphincter is seen at the junction of the esophagus with the stomach the valvular arrangement at the ileocecal junction that is ileocecal valve it prevents the regurgitation of the cecal contents into the ileum now thin layer of connective tissue is present between the two muscle layers it contains plexus of nerves called the myentric plexus or orobax plexus it also contains the blood vessels and the lymphatics the contraction of the muscles in this layer helps in mixing and propulsion of the luminal content by slow rhythmic movements that is called as peristalsis here we can see in general outline in the esophagus we are having uh, the two layers that is the inner circular and outer longitudinal whereas in stomach three layers again the innermost oblique circular and longitudinal layer in the small intestine and the large intestine we are having the two two layers only that is circular and the longitudinal layer the outermost layer covering the muscle is the serous layer or the adventitia it is a serous membrane it is lined by simple squamous epithelium called the mesothelium having the minimal amount of connective tissue and it is in continuation with the visceral peritoneum it consists of large blood vessels and lymphatics and nerve trunks and uh, they traverse through this layer to enter into the gut wall 
This peritoneal layer it is absent in thoracic part of the esophagus and the duodenum. Here the muscle coat it is covered by the adventitia only. Here we can see the adventitia or the serosal layer in different parts. In esophagus we are having adventitia as uh, due to the fact that the esophagus it is not in the peritoneal cavity. Whereas the stomach, small intestine and large intestine, they are covered by the visceral peritoneum, whereas the anal canal or anus, it is covered by the adventitia. Gut is richly innervated by autonomic nervous system and we call it as the enteric nervous system. The nerve fibers, they are of two distinct, present in the form of two distinct plexus, that is the submucosal plexus of Misner that lie in the submucosa near its junction with the circular muscle layer and has only parasympathetic fibers which are secretomotor in nature. The other plexus is the myentric plexus of orobac that lies between the circular and longitudinal cords of muscularis externa and has both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerve fibers but only the cell bodies of parasympathetic nerve fibers are present. These plexus they are both under the control of intrinsic and extrinsic whereas the nerve fibers in these plexus they are both efferent and efferent 